for us tonight for a special little. Um, I, w I wish. And then Irish Diddy. Maybe I'll open with it. Never know. The Paul Brady's sitting in with us tonight. Oh, cool. <laughs> I wish. <Yeah. laughs> At least it's cooler in here than I have that. Yeah. There's some famous sweat in these carpets, man. Ah, the juices of many a rock star. <laughs> Soaked. It's the, it's the juices that we don't really yeah. want to talk about. <laughs> right. <laughs> this is a symbol. It's made out of metal, has holes in it. It's like Swiss cheese, but it's not Swiss cheese. It'll never take off. <laughs> <laughs> you get a whole different perspective. Amen to that, yeah. yeah. Having fun so far? Absolutely. Oh, oh. Uh, always. Always. Yeah. Love it. Love it. <laughs> <laughs> What's the mods in this guitar, is reason? Yeah. Uh, this guitar is uh, it's basically a Roxy model uh, SG that is a recreation of my dad's guitar that he used during the time of the Roxy and elsewhere and apostrophe overnight sensation but mine's customized uh, it's got a sustainiac this pickup if I if I turn this button on you'll see a difference in the sustain so it's sort of like infinite sustain Nigel Tufnell style How you play guitar with Dweezil Zappa? Dweezil has said that you're an incredible addition to the band, which you are, okay? So, and he said you can pretty much play anything that's thrown at you, and I think he means arrangement and instrument wise. So, how did you get the gig? How did I get the gig? Well, um, I met Dweezil on the Hendrix Experience tour. I was playing with um, Doyle Bramhall, and uh, we met, and uh, we were on the same bus, and uh, I eventually got the courage to let him know that I was a huge fan of his dad's music and we just hit it off and eventually I was able to, I had the time to join the band. end of the European tour is Dublin's so the last day of the European tour we had fun? Yeah, great. Yeah? Yeah, it's unfortunately it was short but but great shows. These uh, two or most of these shows I think were some of the best shows that I've at least the most I've enjoyed since I've been in the band. So cool. So we'll definitely see you again. Yes. Adam gentlemen. So. Thank you very much bro. Yeah man. <laughs> <laughs> Daughter of a wealthy Florentine poke. Freedom and great was her just a poor slogan. She was a debutante daisy with a color note organ. Deep in the streets, she drove a 59 organ. Ah. That's the kind of sex 
interested in the bigger picture as much as I can see it as much as I can zoom out and see the whole thing be uh, part of that I'm obsessed process. with it I just uh, I, I've always been that way uh, musically interested in how how it works how the parts fit together and how it works so um, I, I think the majority of musicians may be just sort of interested in their role and that's great that we have them because uh, Composers need people dedicated to their instrument to, to mm. pull this off. It's kind of knowing when to trust um, the people around you, get the best out of them. That's the most uh, satisfying thing for me. I like being part of a team. scenes right here this is what drives me and Chris to be able to play a good show see we have we have rotten egg flavored jelly beans we have we have vomit flavored jelly beans I think, I, I think they call it hot sick here we have hot sick flavored <laughs> jelly beans and uh, you know, well, there's, a new, there's a new classic uh, which is baby wipes baby wipes baby wipes, baby wipes. Yeah, that one replaced uh, rotten milk oh. in the States how you feeling well, you know, I'm feeling all right. I've got a couple of weird issues. The picks I normally use don't seem to be working right. They keep, uh, every time I play, they grind away too quickly, and then they get stuck on the string. So I think I've got a bad batch of picks. Now I'm trying to find something else that'll work right before going on stage, playing with a brand new pick. That's always fun. Uh, so other than that, uh, I, think, uh, I think it's gonna be okay. Rock Yeah. See you out there. Like for me, like I've listened to Frank, like I said, since I was like 13, 14. So a lot of that music, even if I'd never played it, I've listened to it a million times. So it's sort of in my DNA. Yeah. And, and you know, and my mind just constantly Telling me about it, you know, kind of anyway, you know, like that, you know, any of my favorite bands from when I was a kid, and I'm just always thinking about it. But I guess the difference is, uh, you know, when the, we get to solo sections of songs, 
anything can happen. So when we get to the solo sections, if it's like a Chester Thompson tune, I'm thinking, all right, I'm gonna play, like, I'm gonna, I, I have to react to what's happening live, and I'm gonna do it in a way that Ch I feel like Chester would mm. do it with a little of my own stuff, kind of, of kind of thrown in. And that's when it gets even crazier because, for me, because Kurt might be doing one thing, Weasel's doing something totally different, and then somebody play, starts playing in a different time signature, does some polyrhythm, and we'll start going over the bar line, and everything just starts going yeah. like this. Twist around. That's when, that's when I have to concentrate. Sean, first of all, had you ever been familiar with Frank's music before you joined the band? I was, actually. My dad uh, and my uncle uh, <clears throat> introduced me to the band. My dad first. Um, Yellow Snow was the first song that I remember hearing as a kid, and I was like, well, that's funny. That's really weird and like silly, and, and that's kind of how I was like, oh, Frank Zappa, okay, that's cool. And then, um, I don't know, like, high school, I don't know, it was a birthday gift or whatever, but, but my dad uh, bought me a, a C, the CD of Posture of Overnight Sensation, so then I heard that and was immediately a fan of, you know, of all that all the music on that album and um, uh, then in college we ended up doing Joe's Garage as a musical and we almost got shut down <laughs> doing that show but uh, I was a sophomore in, in college and we did Joe's Garage and I played Mary <laughs> <laughs> Dweezel. Is it intense? Is it is it hard? I know he's like sometimes he's like a circus master in the middle of the stage and he's watching everybody's parts and you know he's listening. Does that add pressure to your performance? For me, I would say no. I because I I don't have time or room in my head to think about that kind of stuff. <laughs> if I'm if I'm having to think about all the stuff I'm doing on stage and and what the boss or anybody else is thinking about, then you know, what am I doing up there? selection of the entire back catalog. Mm -hmm. What have you found has been the most challenging thing for you to ever have to learn or to perform? I'd say to date, mainly because I was not very familiar with uh, Drowning Witch mm -hmm. and having to first of all get the song into my head and into my system and then figure out between all of us what the arrangement would be, who would cover what. Uh, Chris Norton and I just put our heads together and uh, after I kind of my brain broke the first time I really listened <laughs> to it. it. We all did, yeah. And the guys were there and I said, my brain just broke. So once I kind of came to again, Chris and I sat and said, okay, you take this, can you grab this, can you grab this, do you have a good tone for this, can you take this part, this part, and this part, 
And so once it was arranged, then came the learning and internalizing. And now, I'm not saying it's easy by any stretch, but that has been, besides Bebop Tango, I'd say Drowning Witch is a real, real big challenge. She could mutate and safely. She could mutate and safely. That's right. You know, she could go on the freeway and grow up to be 15 feet tall and scary looking. And then, cars could crash all over the place as a result of people with Hawaiian shirts on. See her face. Sardines in her eyebrows. Lobsters up and down her forehead. All of them horribly large from radiation. And smelling very bad and dangerous. Maybe a submarine could save her. And bring her home to the Navy. For some kind of a oh oh ah oh oh. So in one of Frank's last interviews with uh, Jamie Ganga from NBC, when he was asked how he wanted to be remembered, he responded that he didn't want to be remembered at all. Yeah, he said, I wouldn't. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so this is something that has been brought up before where, uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, well, wouldn't you want to respect somebody's wishes? And, and in, in this case, I would have to respectfully say no, because mm -hmm. I feel like he always had a very self-deprecating sense of humor. Uh, and he wasn't uh, somebody that went out there to say, hey, everybody look at me. You know, he just let his music speak for itself. And a lot of people uh, loved it and knew about it, and it was a lifelong thing for them. But uh, it wasn't like it was a, uh, something for the masses, you know. So, um, but I feel like anything can be popular if it gets exposure, you know. Mm -hmm. And one of my goals was to be able to play this music live on stage for new people, you know, people that had never heard it before, a younger generation that really has no idea about some of the things that came before. The first word of this song is discorporate. It means to leave your body. Discorporate and come with me. Shifting, drifting, proudness, stardust. The things that you could see in a live performance of this music uh, encompass uh, everything from uh, improvisation. <laughs> Performing the the written material, but there's there's uh, all these layers, and the the thing that my dad described it as was uh, you know you have to put the eyebrows on it. So there's mm -hmm. a there's a certain intangible thing that's like this attitude, uh, which for me just growing up as uh, you know a fly on the wall, seeing him do what he did, I feel like I have a pretty good idea of what the eyebrows mean yeah. you know like what he meant by how to infuse that with the attitude so the, this band can infuse the music with the right attitude you know put the eyebrows on it <laughs>
and that's the, the biggest uh, uh, joy for me in playing the music is that you know it's one thing to, to play uh, learn the right rhythms and the right notes and, and be able to execute parts but it's another thing to just have it sort of come to life on stage and and the um, the thing that's that's really cool about the way my dad's music is created is that you can have songs that have structure where everybody has to play the right parts but then there's improvisational things mm. that happen in the middle of the song which are part of the arrangement but that means that every time you play the song it's different there's lots of uh, stuff to do i'm also planning on releasing a lot more uh, music from uh, from the tour particularly this band because uh, we have excellent dozens and dozens of songs that yeah. we could put out there <laughs> Please get out there well, we all look forward to that. This is Tweedle Zappa, Choice Cuts Tour, Dublin 2018.